Welcome back to Cypress Academy, Wicked Wi-Fi 101. Before you get started with this video, you should download and install the Wicked Studio from the Cypress Wi-Fi website. Wicked Studio is our Eclipse-based IDE for developing Wi-Fi and Bluetooth products. We support running it on PCs, Macs, as well as Linux. In this lesson, I will walk you through the Wicked Studio and show you all of the pieces of the Wicked Software Development Kit. When you first run the IDE, you will get the choice to select Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. For the purposes of these videos, you should choose 43XXX Wi-Fi. This is not a permanent choice, so don't worry. When the time comes, you will be able to switch back and forth with the SDK filter at the top of the screen. After picking the Wi-Fi SDK, you will see a screen that looks like this, a fairly normal Eclipse view of a software development kit. On the left, you can see the Project Explorer. This is where all of the files in the SDK reside, along with your project. I will show you this in detail in just a minute. In the middle of the screen, you will see readme.txt. This file is delivered with every version of the Wicked Studio and is packed with information about your specific release. We have been releasing Wicked Studio multiple times per year, and there's always good new stuff to find out about in the README text. In general, the lessons that I'm showing you will work with the most current release of our software. And in fact, I will keep up the textbook and the projects to make sure they stay in sync with our software. In the upper right-hand part of the screen, you will see the Make Targets window. Wicked Studio is based on Make, so in order to build and program your project, you will need to create a Make Target, which I will talk about in detail in the next video. In the lower right-hand part of the screen, you will see the Wicked Studio IDE help screen, which gives you information about how to use the tool itself to build your projects. Finally, at the bottom of the screen, you will find the Eclipse console where you will find all of the information, warning, and error messages that are created by compiling and programming your project. Now, let's dig into the Project Explorer. When you click on the little Expand button, you'll see nine directories. In addition, you'll see about a dozen other files required to run Wicked. Two of the interesting ones are readme.txt, which I already showed you and shows up in the middle of the screen when you start Wicked. The other one is called version.txt, and this tells you which version of the SDK you're using. Now let's look at the apps folder. This is where all of the source code for the demo projects, example projects, and most importantly, your project will reside. In the next videos, I will go into detail about how to create new projects. But for now, know that you will need to make a folder in the apps folder containing your source code. You can spend a little bit of time looking at the demo apps, and in the next video, I'll show you how to build and program them. The next directory is called build. It contains the intermediate files used to build your project. For instance, each of your .c files will end up in .o files, and they'll reside in this directory before being turned into a hex file by the linker. You can delete this directory anytime you want, and it will be recreated by the make process. In fact, that's exactly what make clean does. The doc directory contains all of the Wicked SDK documentation. The most important of these files is called api.html, which is an HTML browsable document that's generated by Doxygen. You can double-click api.html and it will open up in a window inside of Eclipse. Or you can right-click Open with System Editor and it will open up inside of your web browser. The Include directory contains all of the C header files for the Wicked SDK. The Libraries directory contains important utilities which you can use as part of your project, including HTTP, DNS, DHCP, MQTT, etc. I will talk in more detail about these in the upcoming videos. The Platforms directory contains all of the board support packages for each of the development kits, sometimes called development platforms. These files include the schematics for the board, 
the definitions of the pens, the radio firmware, and all the other things required to make the underlying fabric work. There will be an entire video dedicated to discussing these directories. The resources directory is used to hold things that are required for your project, but are not C source files. For instance, web pages for a web server or security keys to attach to amazon.com. The tools directory contains the compiler and all of the rest of the tool chain required to build and program your projects. Finally, the Wicked directory holds the actual SDK files. In the next video, I will show you how to build and program your first project. You can post your comments and questions in our Wi-Fi developer community on cypress.com, or as always, you're welcome to email me at allen underscore hawes at cypress.com, or tweet me at askiotexpert with your comments, suggestions, criticisms, and questions. Thank you.